Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Sam. I'm so happy you're here. This vlog is going to be a little different than my other ones. I'm not exactly going to vlog anything I'm doing today, just the packing list. I have my handy dandy iPad. She's going to help us through this list today. Also, I apologize if you see any mess in this room at the moment. Um, that's not really mess, that's just it's just there. As you can see, I have all my bags behind me. You can't see the middle one, so I'm going to move, but here they are in all their glory. Those luggage tags back there, the pink ones, are so freaking cool. I got them for Christmas. They have my name, address, phone number, all the works on it, but it's engraved into the, the tag. So for those of you who don't know yet, I am traveling to London. You probably could tell by the title, but I am studying abroad there next semester. This time next week, I will be in London in my new dorm. I, I can't even think about that right now. That's crazy. But regardless, I'm going to tell you guys kind of what I'm planning on packing. And of course, I'm no expert, but I have had a lot of help. But I did compile my own list of things that I am packing to take to London. So without further ado, let's do it. Okay, let's get this going, shall we? Sorry. Okay, first on the London packing list, we're going to go through my carry-on because I think that's extremely important. As far as carry-on goes, we're going to start with travel documents. My program recommended me to make copies of practically everything, which is a very good caution. So I'm taking a copy of my passport, not the entire thing, absolutely not, just the picture of what's important on the passport. Then I'm carrying information on my credit and debit cards, my flight information, emergency contact info, um, my social security and my birth certificate. I know that social security and birth certificate really don't um, do a ton in the UK because the only US document I may need is going to be my passport. If I lose my passport, they may need copies of those things in order to get me another one so you never know but whatever you do have to bring to your study abroad experience or if you're simply going on a trip just you know around the world i would definitely bring copies of stuff because people like to steal things all right next oh this is so important one outfit and a comfy one too i'm bringing probably what i'm wearing right now which is lululemon i mean workout clothes but these are comfortable for me. I hopefully won't need another outfit to change into, but you know, in case a situation happens or I need to stay the night or something spills on me, I don't know. If something happens, I will have another outfit to change into, which will be great. Next, I have a travel brush that I'm using. It's the same exact as my like wet brush. It looks like this. Next, I would say travel sized supplies. So in my carry on, I have this um, little travel pack of like standard travel size bottles that I have filled with my toiletries. I have purchased like little things of um, like shaving cream or shampoo or uh, what is that called? It's a, the thing that you put on your hair when it's greasy, dry shampoo. I have a mini razor, which is great. Of course, I'm bringing a normal sized razor, but for my um, smaller excursions or weekend trips, I'm definitely going to bring a little razor. Anything that's travel sized that can fit and is TSA approved, I would bring it because you really don't know what's gonna happen. If you have to stay at a hotel overnight, again, those would be really good to have. Next, I have contacts and contact solution and glasses. If you don't wear contacts or glasses, you know, ignore this. I would definitely bring them because again, never know, you might need them. Um, I also suffer from pretty dry eyes. So sometimes I like to be able to change into my glasses because my contacts will irritate my eyes or if I'm staring at a screen for a long time, you know. All right, next is Advil or any medication. I personally don't take any medications. If you do, obviously you should bring that with you. I am bringing Advil and some vitamin C because I take vitamin C every morning and Advil is just in case I get a headache. Next is skincare. So of course I said travel size toiletries earlier. If I were you, I wouldn't want to wear a face full of makeup if you need to stay longer in the airport or something like that. So I would bring any skincare you need. I do have a 
face mask that's called a flight face mask. I'll try and put a picture of it up here if I can find it. But I'm going to try and use that. I haven't used it in a while because I haven't really been on a flight in a while. <laughs> Anything to just freshen up your face. Also, makeup. If you want to do your makeup in the airport, I might do my makeup on the plane, freshen it up a little bit. All right, next are electronics. So I am bringing quite a few things. First, I'm bringing my reading light because I definitely am going to bring a book or two to use on the plane. And I don't want to have to click that overhead light and just blind everybody around me. So I would recommend buying a small reading light. They're very inexpensive. Oh, a tray phone holder. This is not electronic, but it counts as like a device. It's like it hooks onto the tray in front of you and it can hold your phone so you can watch movies. Next is my laptop, my iPad, AirPods, and chargers for everything. All right, next I'm bringing my black Lululemon belt bag because I carry everything in there. Next is anything to entertain yourself. So of course we talked about electronics. I'm bringing two books, uh, my journals, pens, my Bible. The pens, journals, and Bible will go into the suitcase carry-on because I don't plan on using that on the plane, but the duffel bag will have two of the, of the books that I'm going to be reading on the plane. All right, I think that's it. Oh, of course, what am I doing? Bring a water bottle and fill it up in the airport. You obviously can't bring things full of water or any liquid through TSA, but I'm bringing, where is she at? I'm bringing this. This one is like one of the sippable ones. You can't see. Yeah, you can. There's a hole right there, but you can also lock it. I would highly recommend finding a water bottle that locks. Done with the carry-on. If you guys have anything else you want to put in there, be my guest, but that is my list. Next is the actual suitcase. So we're going to start with clothes, which is a very long list. But I did buy a lot of clothes because in London they wear a different style of clothing than I typically do. I typically wear lots of athletic clothes to school as I would to the gym. So let's get into it. First things first, definitely grab a stay... I'm sorry, I can't read. Definitely grab a 10 day supply of socks and undergarments. That way you can go a week with your stuff and you have time to do laundry and then you have a few more left over for when you need to use those as well. Next, we're gonna talk about pants. I am bringing two pairs of jeans. Yes, only two. A lot of people told me that I'm not gonna make it on two pairs of jeans. However, I plan on buying a pair or two more when I get there. Four pairs of non-jeans pants, which include anything from like suit-like pants to like I have like a pair of corduroy pants. I have a pair of plaid pants, leather pants. I'm bringing those and I did bring a pair of Pink pants, I definitely brought a lot. However, most of those pants are easy to pack. Next thing on my list is leggings. As far as leggings go though, I'm only bringing three pairs of leggings. I know that's not a lot. As I was told from people, the citizens of London and I guess England as well in general, they typically only wear yoga pants when they're working out or when they're doing anything active or athletic. I typically work out in spandex, which I am bringing three pairs of spandex, but for the days that I want to work out in leggings, I have that option. Next, I'm bringing two swimsuits because I'm likely going to travel to a warmer country during the warmer months of the semester. All right, next I'm bringing six casual tank tops. Actually, I'm going to make that seven because I found one and I forgot I had it, so I packed it. All these tank tops are super easy to pack, so they really didn't take much room at all, but I am bringing two of those that are athletic tank tops that I can work out with them. Next, I am bringing two formal tank tops. Um, they're typically satin ones or anything that you would wear to like a formal event. I'm only bringing two because I'm sure I'm going to buy another one when I'm there. Next, I am bringing three t-shirts and three t-shirts only because I'm going to buy a t-shirt there or anywhere. I guarantee it. Next, I'm bringing one crew neck that I can like dress up. Two sweatshirts. One is a Bama one. I'm bringing a white hoodie because I can also dress it up if I want to. It's very simple. It's from Target. Next, I am bringing Four sweaters. I did not bring my biggest one because I realized it's going to be really difficult to pack. So I would recommend not bringing a super, super bulky sweater unless it's like your favorite sweater on the planet. 
Then I did bring some extra cute tops, nothing crazy. They could probably be added into the tank top category because I love my tank tops. Then I am bringing two button downs. I figured those would be really easy to dress up and I have two that are very comfortable. So I could probably dress them up, maybe even dress them down a little bit. Next, I am bringing three pairs of sweatpants. Make that two. One of the pairs that I have on here doesn't really count as sweatpants. They're more like joggers. They're kind of like a windbreaker material, so I wouldn't exactly say they're sweatpants. But I am bringing two pairs of actual sweatpants. My black trench coat, black vest, which is down in Alabama right now. I'm bringing a lot of thermals or undershirts, anything that you can layer with if you're going to a colder country or if you're going to a country in a, just a colder month. Then of course, gloves, hat, scarf. I got my gloves from Costco. You would think, since I do live in the northern United States, I would have a good pair of cute gloves that I can wear with any outfit, and I don't. Next, let's get into the shoes. Shoes were a big problem for me because I want to bring all my shoes, of course. I'm like, I'm going to use them all. And I don't even use all the shoes that I brought down to Tuscaloosa. Like, that's the thing. I'm bringing five pairs of shoes, which is probably one too many. However, I don't care. I am wearing my Nike blazers to the airport and I am packing my, like, on clouds, my tennis shoes, into this duffel right here. There's a little pocket on the side that is used for shoes because this is marketed as a gym bag. I would totally use it as a gym bag, um, but there is space in there for a pair of shoes. There's actually space in there for twos, twos, two pairs of shoes. I am bringing my brown Converse, their platform Converse, and they're very comfortable. I am bringing BZs and I do have one pair of like formal rain boot kind of shoes from Mark Fisher. When it comes to buying shoes for a country that you're going to stay at for a while, I would pick comfort over a lot of things. Obviously, you want them to be cute and fun, but comfort honestly is my top contender when it comes to picking out shoes, especially if you're going to be walking around a lot. All right, next is everything else that I'm bringing that's not in my carry-on that's not clothing. Bath stuff, like a towel maybe. Next, of course, toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, retainer, whatever you need for your teeth to keep them clean. Oh, I'm also bringing nail supplies. Not a lot, of course, but I do like to keep track of my cuticles, which always backfires on me because then they bleed and it doesn't end well. Oh, ha! Bring a first aid kit or band-aids. At least bring band-aids. Any other electronic that you think you need. So for example, I'm bringing a mini speaker, I have a fabric shaver. It works really well, to be honest with you, and it's really helpful, not gonna lie. I've had a lot of pilling on my clothes or just like lint everywhere. And that has helped a lot, especially on my sweaters. Next, I'm bringing some extra bags. I have a Kate's bag, Kate's bag. I have a Kate Spade purse, as well as a tote that I got from Target that I'm going to use for school. But yeah, honestly, that is all I'm bringing. I'm going to link a lot of stuff in the description that I think are like more of a travel hack. <laughs> I should bring that. I totally almost forgot this and that would have been terrible. Bring an umbrella. I can't believe I almost forgot to do that. Thank God I made this video. Last thing I'm bringing, this is more of a me thing to bring, but this is Squishy. It's what I named him. You know, pretty self-explanatory. It's just like a memory foam cloud and I couldn't tell you where I got it, but I've had it for years. Squishy used to have a face. It has some eyes left, but it used to have a full face. Um, he's coming with me on the plane for sure in case I just have some plane anxiety, um, travel anxiety, whatever may happen. If you're really stressed out and what to bring, I would just ask yourself, what do I use on a daily basis that I might need to use on this plane or on the flight? Because flights can be long, especially if you're going around the world. Yeah, I cannot think of anything else to bring, and I am not an expert, once again, on what to bring to study abroad. Like I said, this is my first time ever going really across the world in general. I've only been to, like, Canada. Once again, I'm going to link stuff in the description below. If you have any other questions or suggestions for me, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you on travel day.